Who was Apostle Paul, and why is he important to us? Apostle Paul was a lot like a whirlwind that could not be stopped, and his dreams were mainly driven by his passion to see souls saved from darkness and brought into the glorious light of Jesus. Of course, he was one of the disciples that came down the line, but he was also enlisted as an apostle because his passion surpassed every other person's passion. It was almost as if he would cease to exist if he stopped showing others the truth about the new life in Christ. Paul had every right to receive financial support for his missionary work. However, he chose not to exercise that right, so he would not be accused of acting out of improper motives. It is clear that this decision was made because Paul did not want to be accused of acting out of improper motives. The apostle didn't feel driven to preach because of the financial reward, but rather because God required it of him. He had been given a mandate from the Lord Jesus to act as his ambassador and to spread the good news throughout the world. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge, and so not make full use of my rights as a preacher of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 16 to 18. Therefore, he was willing to forego financial remuneration, give up complete control over the use of his rights in the gospel, and make it freely available to others. Paul's joy came from witnessing the work that God did in people's lives. As a result, he opted to provide for himself financially, rather than risk missing out on that opportunity. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many people. To the Jews I became like a Jew to win Jews. To those under the law I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law but am under Christ's law so as to win those not having the law. To the weak I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 19 to 22. In spite of the fact that Paul was not bound to anybody and was not a slave to anyone else, he made himself a slave to everyone and served all people in order to bring as many people as possible to faith in Christ. In subjects that were not of the utmost importance, he was willing to adopt the practices of either Jews or Gentiles in order to obtain an audience among them for the purpose of spreading the gospel. Paul, who was himself a Jew, was willing to participate in Jewish rituals and live his life as if he were subject to the law despite the fact that he was free from the constraints of the law in order to bring Jews to faith in Jesus Christ. Thus, Paul was willing to become all things to all people, so that, by every possible means he might save some, because of God's visitation on his life, Paul would do whatever he had to do to accomplish it. If you need to study someone's culture or country to have a little in common to talk with them, then do it. What is it that drives you? Which is more important, money, power, or fame? None of these things will ultimately sate your hunger for fulfillment, and none of them will merit your undivided devotion. Instead, you should make following your savior and transforming your life as required in order to make others aware of who he is, your first priority. When we finally comprehend the depth of His love for us, we come to the realization that serving Him and bringing others to a saving knowledge of Him ought to be our driving motivation. After all, God proves His own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let that be your push 
and decide to let nothing stop you from exalting your Savior and making the good news known to others. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. 1 Corinthians 9, verses 23 to 24. Paul subjugated his personal preferences to the gospel so that he might share in the blessings. The apostle was aware that the payday would soon arrive. One day, God will repay us for the selfless service and love that we have rendered to him throughout history. Paul's desire to be blessed by God served as a driving force in his life. He asked the Corinthians, Don't you know that the runners in a stadium all race, but only one receives the prize? In a way, that is reminiscent of an athletic competition. Run in such a manner to win the prize. Paul was not content to merely finish the race of the Christian life in order to obtain a participation ribbon. It was important for him to acquire the gold. Competing in athletic events is not merely a form of exercise for real athletes. They do it to win. Even those who profess to be followers of Christ shouldn't just go through the motions. Instead, we ought to compete for the prize by running the race set out for Christians. There is nothing wrong with having the ambition to work one's way up the ladder until one reaches the very top. Make sure that your ladder is leaning against the correct wall before proceeding. You want to climb to the top of the ladder that Christ is standing on. You should crave to hear him congratulate you and call you a good and dedicated servant. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 25. Paul continues to use other sporting events to prove his point. Those that compete are aware that in order to win, they need to maintain self-control in every aspect of their game. An athlete has little chance of winning the award if they do not strictly control their food habits, sleeping patterns, and training routines in order to stay in the running for the reward. Because of this, athletes need to have self-discipline and channel all of their energy into the objective of their competition. They engaged in fierce competition with one another in order to win a crown that would quickly deteriorate. In other words, they put in a lot of effort and time in order to acquire something that was not valuable in the long run. Paul acknowledges that such commitment is admirable, but, in effect, he says the following, That is not part of our agenda. We set our sights higher. We approach our endeavor with an eternal viewpoint. We seek a crown that cannot be destroyed. The blessings that come from God do not get old, corrode, or die. For what are you living your life? All Christians will stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be repaid for our service to our Master. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, New International Version. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. He has seen everything since your conversion, the good and the bad, Nothing has been missed, so how will you fare when the day comes? Maintain a kingdom perspective and strive for the imperishable reward. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. 1 Corinthians 9, verses 26 to 27. Paul had already made up his mind regardless of what the Corinthians would choose to do. He claims that he has no intention of wandering around aimlessly or swinging his arms around like a boxer who is confused about his objective. Instead, he practices self-discipline in order to ensure that after preaching to others, he will not be disqualified himself. Paul's assignment was to carry out the will of his king in this regard. It does not matter what took place. 
he was not going to allow anything to deter him from keeping that focus and earning Christ's favor. Only one of your interests in life is worthy of your complete devotion and unwavering focus, and that is loving Christ and serving Him. Do not jeopardize your chances of winning the prize by dropping out of the competition, running in the incorrect direction, or disobeying the rules in any other way. Run to win. This was a man on a great mission, and his passion could almost be touched. His kingdom dream was to see souls saved, and it was predicated on his love for God. So much so that he defied everything to preach the gospel, even putting his life on the line several times. Romans 8 verses 33 to 39 Amp says, Who will bring any charge against God's elect, his chosen ones? It is God who justifies us declaring us blameless and putting us in a right relationship with Himself. Who is the one who condemns us? Christ Jesus is the one who died to pay our penalty, and more than that, who was raised from the dead, and who is at the right hand of God interceding with the Father for us. Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written and forever remains written, for your own sake, we are put to death all day long. We are regarded as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Becoming a man that is so driven and passionately pursuing his dream to see people saved became the ground upon which he received deep wisdom to communicate to people in the face of obvious difficulty. He went from one nation to another, carrying the everlasting gospel of Christ, not minding the obvious threats to his life and that of his companion. Act 17 Verses 1 to 32 and 34 Amp says, Now after Paul and Silas had traveled through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul entered the synagogue, as was his custom, and for three Sabbaths he engaged in discussion and friendly debate with them from the Scriptures, explaining and pointing out scriptural evidence that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and rise from the dead, and saying, This Jesus whom I am proclaiming to you is the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed. This was Paul's lifestyle till he drew his last breath, a man whose mission was what constantly beats in God's heart. What an awesome mission and purpose for a man like Paul! The question this poses to us as believers is, what are your plans for your Father's kingdom? You may not have to put your life on the line like Paul did, but there must be something in your heart that you want to accomplish for the kingdom before you depart from this world. Let us pray. Father, I am grateful for the free gift of salvation and your love that compels me to share the good news of the kingdom with others. Dear Lord, just like Paul, I ask that you stir up my heart with a strong mission and plan for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, Amen.